Sadly, Anita Scorsese has released another video. Her final damsel in distress video, the video that was supposed to just be one video and then it got put into two videos and then it was three videos. This time she looks at a number of very promising games. Some with very novel game mechanics and others that use humor and irony to what I would argue actually makes a negative statement about sexism. However, her trademark blank stare of disapproval readily dismisses seemingly any indication of gendered characters. Don't fret though. As per her other videos, she permits us to simultaneously enjoy and maintain a healthy suspicion of games. Never let your guard down, girls. Gendered representations of video game characters could be anywhere waiting to oppress you. We start off with what looks like a very fun game, Super Princess Peach. It is on my to-buy list. It is a platformer for the DS where you get to play as Princess Peach. In the game, Peach's special moves are all based around her emotions. You have to use your emotions of joy, rage, gloom, and calm to defeat enemies, solve puzzles, and otherwise get through the game. Despite this being a fairly novel game mechanic, Nina dismisses the game because she can't see this as anything but a PMS joke. She additionally discredits it because as it turns out, your magic umbrella is really a little boy that's been cursed, and that side story takes the attention off of Peach. While comparing Damsel in Distress with the Dude in Distress, that is when a male character needs saving by a woman, Anita says that they're not equivalent because of the broader historical and cultural implications. This is a pretty vague statement. But one of the reasons she follows it up with is that damsel characters reinforce pre-existing regressive notions about women as a group being weak because of their gender, while stories with uh, the occasional helpless male do not perpetuate anything negative about men as a group. Since there's no longer standing stereotypes about men being weak and incapable because of their gender. That is Bullshit. There are plenty of such stereotypes of men being weak, incompetent, hot-headed, indecisive, stupid, unable to think outside of their penis. These have been prevalent in TV sitcoms for years, in shows like Home Improvement, King of Queens, Hercules, even Roseanne, The Big Bang Theory, and in movies like Three Men and a Baby, or uh... Anything that comes out by Adam Sandler nowadays. Oh, the good mean meaning father figure without a fucking clue. These examples aren't video games, but they are part of a lar larger cultural context that Anita keeps. Plus, how many times have you read a book, watched a TV show, or a movie that shows shorter, smaller, uglier guys being portrayed as completely helpless in almost everything while the alpha male character of the group, or a woman in their life, guides them along. Nina presents a slightly misleading factoid when she mentions a study that showed that only 4% of leading titles are exclusively designed around women in the leading role. Yes, we know that most games don't have a leading female protagonist, but what Anita admitted from the study was that it found 45% of the games had an option of selecting a playable female character. That's a pretty good number, and if Nina was objective at all, she would have at least noted it as a positive sign. The indie game Spelunky, that's Spelunky, Spelunky, is used as backdrop for her claims about dudes in distress. In the game, while you are Spelunking, Spelunking, you find and rescue a damsel in each level. In the settings, you can replace the female damsel with a Chippendale style hunk, her words. Or a very cute dog that looks like a pug. Anina takes an unfair jab at the existence of a dog option, saying that being able to easily replace a female character with a dog is probably a pretty good indication that something is wrong. It's obvious from the clip of the game that the purpose of the damsel is really just a token that the protagonist needs to carry to the end of the level. The damsel in Spelunky isn't meant to have any depth and doesn't have any real dialogue and that's why it's possible to swap her out with two other options. I covered why this isn't a terrible thing in the first video response to her first damsel in distress video. 
This is insane. Spelunky is bad. It's an arcade platformer without any real story and randomly generated levels. It's silly to expect that every type of game should have some in-depth story. Nina chooses to take a jab at the cute little dog because the juxtaposition suggests the female damsel is valued at the same level of the dog and this is the message she wants to send to her audience. Even though it's inappropriate given the larger context of the game. Nina continues talking about the guy and girl damsel options in Spelunky, explicitly saying that the girl is a problem and the guy is not. Her reasoning is that this is because the female damsel reinforces pre-existing stereotypes about women, but the guy does not reinforce any pre-existing stereotypes about men. Even though she said in her words that he was a Chippendale style hunk. Isn't that a stereotype? The square jawed, dumb as rock with flowing blonde locks and, and chiseled abs. It's worth noting that the hunk is wearing only underwear and a bow tie, while the female damsel is at least fully clothed. Yet providing these options are not a quick and easy fix. Anita wants to tell us how to fix things. Later she said simply reversing roles in the damsel in stress is not enough and that we need to think beyond the cliché. Well, it is a plot device that, as Anita has mentioned, we have a lot of history with. It is easy and familiar, that is why it is done ad nauseum. Games that don't need a deep story end up using it in their three second intro and it has no bearing on 99% of the gameplay. Some games still focus primarily on gameplay, you know. As it turns out, Anita is no fan of irony. Games that employ irony and humor to poke fun at the damsel trope get a disappointed shake of the head from Nita. Because they do not disrupt what the trope says about the role of women in these narratives. But why should they have to? These, the examples she mentions are all arcade games or co-op multiplayer games without a story of any depth. So they don't actually have an opportunity to disrupt the trope through storytelling. Aside from avoiding the trope completely, which wouldn't address the issue, the most they can do to damage the trope would be to poke fun of it, as they are doing. Anita somehow attributes trick game endings where the damsel at the end of the game turns out to be some weird clown person like in Castle Crashers or a monster like in Aversion to be comedy at the damsel's expense. I don't understand the reason here since it is the protagonist who turns out to have quested for not. It seems to be the joke is on them, not the damsel. Later on, Anita argues that not taking jokes seriously, which is what I am proposing, is a sad time honored tradition, and that we're all fundamentally understanding how humor functions as one of the primary means by which culture of sexism is maintained and perpetuated. I would argue that beating women, denying them the rights such as to be able to drive, go somewhere without a chaperone, or to get a job, a more primary means to perpetuate the culture of sexism. It is also possible that Anita fundamentally misunderstands how humor functions. We use humor as a tool to communicate with each other, to get along with each other, and to cope with sensitive social and cultural issues. Anita's solution to the damsel cliche is a call to action with catchy mantras such as disrupt the established pattern, break the cycle, and create new gender paradigms. Well, maybe the last one isn't catchy, but that was her closing remark, so it must be catchy, right? But what does it really mean? What kind of new gender paradigms can we create here? Early in the video, she used a Seeker of Monkey Island, a positive example since it features Elaine Marley as a strong, capable pirate who engineers her own escape. Though the male protagonist Guy Brush Thrupwood ruins it with his attempts to rescue her. Oh, by the way, she ends up, like, she uses that as a good example, but then she later says the, that game isn't really perfect because the main character is still the male. Why am I talking like this? Strong, capable females aren't new by her own examples in Monkey Island, Beyond Good of Evil, etc. And aside from video games, going back into history with, say, Joan of Arc. And let's not forget the numerous female gods of yore. And, uh, are you a Tomb Raider? 
She still hasn't talked about that game. Even though in the latest Tomb Raider, you're saving a damsel in distress, but you happen to be female. Her own proposed game story, The Legend of the Last Princess, features a princess who rescues herself by breaking out of the prison's brick wall. Cool! A advanced tile. Ooh, yeah! With her bare fists, and then the player would level up by defeating Legion to bad guys and beat the game by going out to on to defeat the council of, of evil men that imprisoned her. Beating up evil men? This sounds like a gender swap reversal that the dude in his dress does, which she dismissed because we need to think beyond the cliche. Well, at least this is a different cliche. Mutual aid is offered as a positive mechanic, whereby the female protagonist need not to be comically overpowered to drive the storyline. Here characters help each other to advance and hence people of all genders can cooperate. It is really just a mechanic that could be used to swap between different gendered characters. Kind of like in Spelunky, but where you're swapping the playable character. In a multiplayer game with female characters, this kind of multi-gender cooperation can occur sporadically. Like uh, the multiplayer mode with Spelunky. Again, this isn't a new gender paradigm. New things just don't appear. They're usually combinations or iterations of old things. Maybe Anita doesn't know what she really wants. I would guess that when she says new gender paradigms, she just want more games with exclusively female protagonists or just strong females in general and definitely no boob jiggle. For the latter, I would suggest you find a good sports bra. This one isn't. It's not a sports bra. In the meantime, I will continue to enjoy good games, including new games with female leads, which I think is totally nice to see, and not be insecure about my gender or get bogged down with concerns of characters' genders in the game. A wise man once said, let me see if I can get this right, <clears throat> it's only game, why you have to be mad? <laughs>